Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to part three of Darwell20's Mod Spotlight covering Create. Uh, crazy awesome mod. There's a lot of things to cover today. I think the main things I want to look at today are mostly going to be covering fluids first, which are pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, and then we'll get into maybe some pistons, pushing and pulling. We're going to take a look at schematics, and we're going to take a look at some of the tools that are available because Create adds both handheld tools that you can carry around and use, as well as block tools that can be used for drilling and harvesting and doing all kinds of stuff in large multi-block setups. So let's cover all that stuff today in part three. And then like I mentioned in part four, we will probably cover uh, putting together all these disparate pieces to build some cool machines and give you guys examples of what's possible. That'll be what's available in part four of this Mod Spotlight. So without further ado, let's get started. So over here I've got uh, a pretty simple and straightforward setup for what I'm going to demonstrate what you can do with uh, fluids using Create. And I've also placed down a creative motor. This motor is unavailable with a crafting recipe, so you have to be in creative mode or cheat them in. Um, but for simple setups like this, I'm going to be doing this for the spotlight. Just note that you don't have access to this motor unless you're in creative mode or cheat the item in. So keep that in mind. Um, so this motor is going to be used momentarily here to power our hose pulley, which is the first block I'm going to demonstrate to you. It is used for placing or draining large fluid bodies in the world. When powered by kinetics, it will either raise or lower the hose location of the hose determines up to which height extraction or filling will act. When fluids are pulled away from the pulley, it starts taking fluid blocks from the body the hose end was lowered into. Very large bodies of fluids will be considered infinite. So if you stick this on an ocean, it's going to be considered infinite. I am not stuck on an ocean. I'm in a little lake, a really tiny lake, barely a pond, probably even maybe a puddle, and it will therefore not be considered infinite, which you'll see in a minute. When fluids are pushed to the pulley, it starts filling fluid into the world, up to the hose end's height. So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. So when we hook this guy up to uh, some kind of rotational spin, which I'm gonna do right now, uh, and connect him here, you'll notice nothing's really happening if you pay attention to the water here. That's because we're turning him the wrong way. Uh, but if we go ahead and get ourselves a gearbox and reverse the turn, you'll see he starts lowering the hose. So this is the Y level at which uh, up to the, the thing can, can either extract or insert fluids. So if we don't want them to go that deep, we could simply reverse that and pull the hose back up, which just on its own surface looks pretty stinking cool. I'm going to show that again because that is so cool looking. Whoop. And then boop. pretty spiffy. Cool. Um, so once that's you know taken care of and you've got the hose at the appropriate position, you're going to want to start draining fluids from the world. So to do that, you're going to need to hook up a mechanical pump. This takes rotational force and uses it to move fluid along a pipe. Has a maximum range of effect in both directions of about 16 blocks by default. Which means if you want to push fluids more than 16 blocks, you're going to need more mechanical pumps. Got it? That's all it means. Um, applied rotational force creates pressure that forces fluid through the pipe network. Reverse the direction of the rotational force to switch the direction within which the fluid flows. In other words, uh, put this dude like so and connect up some fluid pipes, which are fluid pipes. I don't think I need to explain to you what a fluid pipe is. Um, <clears throat> we're going to just connect these guys up here. You can hit them with a wrench if you want to see through them, which is always a good time, but you don't need to. Uh, chicken wants to see what's going on. Then we just have to note that there's a little arrow here that tells you the direction that things are flowing. You might think, oh, Dyer, you have to turn that thing around. No, you have to make sure that the cog wheel that you place on this is facing the right direction. So if I put the cog wheel in here, um, you'll note that it's going to start draining fluids. And I might need to lower the hose just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is um, place a block here so that the hose goes down a little bit. And then reconnect this guy. Boop, boop. And we'll reverse the direction of flow here for a sec. So I will put my gearbox back. That'll lower the hose into the water. Okay. Um, now, if I were to connect this up, you'll notice that the arrow is now facing the wrong direction. So either, uh, you know, what we could do is just put another gearbox here, and that'll shoot the arrow in that direction, and then water will start pumping from the Y level that the hose is in. Pretty cool. And if we check over here, we'll see some fluid blocks being drained. How neat is that? I think it's pretty cool. Goodbye, water blocks. 
So I'm gonna replace this fluid tank that I placed here, which is basically just what you would expect. Stores all your favorite fluids, scales in width and height. Right click with a wrench changes the optional window. Boop, 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 boop. Scales with width and height. Ooh, look at that fanciness. Oh, that's cool. Nice, that is, that is gorgeous. Oh, hello. That is gorgeous. Look at that, that's cool. I assume that would have taken all the fluid tanks if I wasn't in creative mode at the moment. But yeah, see, see what's happening here? So I'm gonna speed you up a little bit. Sweet. Look at it go. So you'll notice that it pulls from the Y level that the hose is at. And if we remove this block underneath the hose, it should maybe pull from that Y level now, I guess, maybe. I'm not 100% sure how that works. We might need there to be a water source block where the hose is. Maybe. So you're gonna start pulling now? Yeah, you are. Okay, so see, it needs to have a water source block where the hose end is, but now that that's there, it's gonna pull from this Y level. So basically, you don't need this here no more. So this, this thing only changes where the Y level of the hose is, right? So you don't need to spin this bit unless you wanna move the hose. Got it? Good. Also note that there is the item drain and the item sprout. These are for uh, emptying your fluid items like buckets. So pipe or, or, or conveyor belt a bucket into here and it will remove the liquid. Uh, and alternatively, the spout will uh, refill your fluid items. So put a fluid container item in here like a bucket or bottle. Uh, when it's placed underneath the spout, it will attempt to refill it with its own stored liquid. Nice. So I guess you would run a uh, conveyor belt underneath it with a bucket on it. Let's try that because that sounds cool. So I've set up a pretty simple system here that will um, drain the water. You can see the arrows are facing away from the tank. It'll fill up this guy. Uh, so if we drop, for example, a bucket on here, watch what happens. Cool. And you can see it filling back up inside there. And then we get buckets. How great is that? Does that look awesome or what? There's a few other fluid item blocks I haven't shown you just yet, uh, including the fluid valve, halts the flu of, uh, fluid down a pipe. So just apply rotational force, it'll close it. Apply rotational force in the opposite direction, it'll open it. And then there's also the copper valve handle, a precise source of rotational force that requires the interaction of players. Be careful not to wear yourself out. So basically players can open and close valves as well. All right guys, the next thing I'd like to introduce you to is mechanical pistons. Mechanical pistons are a, a much cooler way of moving blocks around in the world. We already saw rotating blocks, now we're gonna be looking at moving blocks. Uh, so in order to review this, we're going to need some rotational energy as shown here. Uh, and as you can see, you can place your piston down and it's got a little hook inside that you know, indicates to you that it gets spun. And for this example, what I'm gonna show you is uh, we're gonna use the gear shift. So as a reminder, the gear shift reverses uh, the direction of rotation when given a redstone signal. Or to put it a little bit more simply, give it a redstone signal and it goes the opposite direction. See? So that's gonna be important to us. So how does the mechanical piston work? Uh, much uh, like a piston, it pushes blocks in front of it forward. However, in order to do so, you're going to need a piston extension pole that's going to go in the back of the piston. And this will determine how far the piston can push blocks forward. So as a demonstration, if we give it a redstone signal now, it's allowed to go one block space forward. And if we turn off the redstone signal, it'll reverse the direction of the spin, allowing it to go backwards. Now, if we add a couple pole lengths here, we'll see that we can now have it push three blocks forward, uh, up to three blocks because we used three pole extensions. And then when we reverse the direction of rotation here, we will see it start pulling backwards. Pretty cool. And as you might expect, the speed at which this thing is turning is absolutely going to depend upon uh, how fast this thing moves. So if we bump this speed up a little bit, you'll see him moving a lot more quickly. And if we reverse him, he'll move more quickly that direction. And if we bump this guy up a little bit more, we'll uh, you know see how much faster this thing goes. Pretty cool. As you can probably guess, pistons can push blocks. <laughs> I'm shocked, uh, but it won't pull them back. Unless, of course, they're sticky pistons, which we'll cover in a moment. The cool thing about this is it can push multiple blocks. No problem. 
but it won't pull them back. Unless, of course, they're sticky pistons. If you decide to use a sticky piston, which, by the way, you can convert an existing piston into sticky with a little piece of glue or slime, you'll be pretty cool. Uh, and you'll have a sticky piston ready to go. So if you guys saw part two of my spotlight, you understand how rotational things work. Piston moving machines work in very much the same way. So uh, placing a block on the end of this, we'll move it forward and then pull it back just like you might expect. Uh, however, if you place another block on the end here, it will move it forward, but only move back the one with the connection to the sticky piston. However, we can use super glue and then place a block and then it'll move them both forward and move them both back. Pro tip, by the way, you can place super glue in your offhand and any blocks you place will automatically get super glued. Pretty cool. So now if we go ahead and move this thing forward and back, we'll see it doing exactly what we would expect. All the blocks move together. And guess what else works with this? Uh, if you said chassis blocks, you're 100% correct. So we can go ahead and throw a chassis block down here, a little bit of glue, uh, and place a few blocks down. And as a reminder, use the wrench to determine how far this thing extends. So with it covering all the blocks, if we move it forward and then back, no problemo. However, if we shrink this down to just two blocks and then move it forward and back, it'll only pull back the two because that's what we have this thing set to. Don't worry though, if you leave blocks behind, you can always bump this guy back up and when you extend it forward, it'll bump into them and then pull them back with it. Pretty neat. And everything that you might have expected to happen uh, will absolutely happen. So you can still, you know, link all these guys together. You can use control to adjust all these numbers all together like this. And you can do something like this and build a nice platform that gets moved for all kinds of neat automation purposes. Check that out. Beautiful. Can this thing move chests? Yes, it can move chests. Ha ha, ha ha. Now holding a wrench in your hand and taking a look at the sticky mechanical piston will show you some movement mode options that you should be aware of. Always place when stopped, place only in starting position, and place only when anchor destroyed. What do these settings mean? Well, Technically, behind the scenes, when these blocks are moving, they're turned into entities. And when they stop moving, they place them back in the world as blocks. However, if you don't want that to happen, you can adjust that in the placement mode settings. So always place when stopped will place them as blocks when the thing is stopped. And only placed when in a starting position will turn them back into blocks only when it comes back to the starting position, aka this one. Let's demonstrate what I mean by that. A very simple way to demonstrate this is with uh, tilled earth. So if we just get some dirt here and make some tilled earth, ta-da, tilled earth. What happens when you place a block on top of tilled earth? It's no longer tilled earth. It destroys it and turns it back into normal dirt. So if we have this thing in its default setting, which is always placed when stopped, when we move this thing forward, it's going to get placed and turn these guys back into normal dirt. And now when we move it back, uh-oh, we just destroyed all our farmland. Feels bad, man. So let's go ahead and change this setting. Uh, we're going to use the wrench to rotate it and adjust it to be uh, place only in starting position. So with this mode set, it will no longer turn them back into normal blocks until it gets back to the starting position. Now, an important note is when it's normal blocks, you can't interact, you can interact with things like chests. When it's not a normal block, you can't. So when we move this forward, see how it didn't destroy the farmland? That's because these aren't technically blocks. If you actually look at, at Whale, it's telling me I'm looking through these blocks uh, at, at the grass block underneath, right? And you're looking at the farmland. So they haven't actually been turned into blocks. And I also, if I right click, can't interact with the chest. So while it's still an entity, quote unquote, uh, you can't interact with it until, based on the settings, it's placed uh, movement back into the starting position. So once I turn it back into the starting position, you'll see it flicker back into real blocks. And now it's a chest again. And when I look at it, you can see in the top left quarter uh, that it indicates that it's linear chassis and stone. So important thing to note, especially as you start doing automations with this, uh, because you don't want them to turn into real blocks unless you want them to turn into real blocks. Does that make sense? And finally, the third option here um, is to uh, place only when anchor destroyed, meaning that if you do that, they'll never become real blocks again. Sorry, Pinocchio. And what better time than now to show you the sequenced gear shift. This is super useful and 100% designed to work with sticky mechanical pistons because what it does is allows you to sequence and automate uh, things based on 
uh, redstone timing, and all kinds of other cool stuff. So like you can totally automate how this moves. So there's a few things you can do with a sequence gear shift. You can program it to turn, and that's useful for the rotational thingies like, like that we showed in episode two. Uh, move pistons, which is this one, wait for a certain number of ticks, or end, which means we're all done. So let's say we wanted this piston to extend, wait a second or two, and then retract. Let's set it up. All we need to do is set it to piston mode here. Uh, we want it to extend, let's say, two meters forward. Uh, and then we can decide if it's normal speed or double speed in terms of forward. Now, the concept of forward and reversed is a little bit funny depending on what direction your thingy's spinning. So you might need to reverse this. So if we have to reverse it, we have to reverse it. Uh, and then what we'll do is set this one to wait for, let's say, 20 ticks, which is one second. And then we'll do piston two meters reversed, and then you're done. Check. What that means is when we give this a redstone signal, best used with a button, uh, that it'll execute these things in that order. So this may or may not be the right direction forward and backwards, but we'll find out. So it's not. So let's just reverse these and try that again. Now, because we were only doing it three meters at a time, let's do let's do three for here, just so I can set it back to the way it should be. And then we're good. So then we'll set it to two meters again, just for demonstration purposes. And you'll note that now when we hit the button, it's going to move it forward, wait a second, move it back, and only move it two meters at a time. Pretty cool. And we could bump that duration up to say three seconds. And then when we hit the button, it'll wait a little bit longer before it pulls it back. Pretty cool. And I mean, these piston things can get pretty ridiculous. So if we wanted to bump it up to like, I don't know, 11 meters, that sounds fun. Whoop. Doop. Haha, <laughs> that's so cool. How great is that? So obviously a lot you can do here with the sequence gear shift combined with the pistons and the sticky pistons and the, and, 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 Come episode four, we're gonna see some cool things you can do that you can automate this whole setup with. Got it? Good. And obviously, as you would probably expect, the uh, rotational radial chassis also work with this. And this is a great thing to use the mechanical drill, the mechanical saw, and the deployer on, which we'll be uh, taking a look at next. So let's talk about mechanical drills, huh? All right, well, that's cool. Uh, mechanical drills are a device suitable for breaking blocks, movable with pistons, bearings, or other controllers. When powered by kinetics, acts as a stationary block breaker, also hurts entities in its effective area. While moving, breaks blocks with which the drill collides. So note that a lot of the blocks have special mechanics while moving, and you're gonna wanna pay attention to that because any blocks that say they do something while moving would probably be really good on a frame machine like this. So let's take a look. What I'm gonna do uh, is just set up some blocks in the world which you guys can break. Does that sound like a good time? Now note that it's going to take some time for these drills uh, to break the blocks. So if you've only got this thing set to extend a little bit, it may, you know, not make it all the way through on the first pass. So let's go ahead and uh, give it a push and see what happens. And there's a very important thing I want you guys to pay attention to. Check out this chest. You're going to say to me, hey Dyer, how do we get all the things that these break into that chest? You know what the answer is? <laughs> create magic. Create will automatically access any chests on their uh, moving platforms and store things that are interacted with uh, with these tool blocks. So like mechanical drills, mechanical saws, and other things will automatically handle the chests on the thing. So no need for conveyors, no need for piping items around on this thing. It just says, hey, I can uh, I can access a chest on this guy. I'll handle that for you, Dyer. And I say, thank you, Create. That makes my life a lot easier. Pretty cool. So you can interact with this chest using normal pipes and other items, um, hoppers, all the standard stuff that you could interact with um, while the thing is still a block. However, if you want to interact with it when it's not a block, you might want to take a look at this fancy guy, the portable storage interface. You can read all the flavor text there. Long story short, it tells you uh, that if it's on a moving platform. And don't forget if you're gonna put it on a moving platform to do a little bit of um, glue, uh, it can connect to an opposing one up to a block or two apart. I just so happen to put one right here. 
two blocks apart. Look at that. Uh, and you're not going to have it automatically dump into a chest. So if you do want to get items out of the inventory that's on the moving platform, make sure to have some kind of system like this that'll pull items out of it. Let's give it a shot, shall we? I'm going to uh, hit the button here. Whoop, they connect. Items start getting pulled out. And then when it's done pulling items out of the chest, uh, it's going to be allowed to move again. So you're going to want to factor this into your timing with your pistons, because if it takes a while to empty the chest, as you can see it is here because I didn't use a brass piston, it's going to be stuck in the forward position. So make sure to factor in a decent wait time, dependent upon how fast uh, or how slow it's going to take to move items out of the chest. So if I go ahead and do that, it should do a pretty good job of coming back to me here. It's going to go ahead and interact with that. Let's make sure that our piston return is like nice and good here. So that should be cool. Wait a few seconds. He's going to connect briefly and then he's going to retract again. And then we're good. Cool. So keep in mind, you know, it might take a moment or two for the items to get extracted there and then it wants to be pulled back. Right. So factor that into your wait times and definitely use the brass version of a funnel rather than the andesite one. So there's a few fancy gadgets you can make from Create, and we're going to cover some of them now, like the handheld block zapper uh, and the wand of symmetry, which is awesome, and the deforester. But they're going to need refined radiance. So let's first talk about how to make refined radiance. It's uh, a chromatic material, uh, so it starts with chromatic compounds, which are made in the mixer, but it needs to be superheated, so don't forget that blaze cake right? Drop this stuff near some light sources. So for example, glowstone or torches or anything that generates light and it'll slowly but surely absorb the light. Don't be afraid if you accidentally pick it up while it's absorbing the light because it has a little progress bar down here telling you how it's doing. I think it needs about eight or nine pieces of glowstone before it's fully charged. Uh, and when done, it'll turn into this awesome refined radiant stuff. It works pretty well. However, there's an even better way to do it for you end game folks, and that is to use a beacon, an active beacon no less. Uh, all you got to do is drop it into the active beacon beam and it will immediately transform into the refined radiance. Now I should note that uh, this thing's pretty light. Hey, where'd you go? Oh, I missed him. That's why. Oh, hello. Get back here, you. Come back here. Yeah, I need that. Don't be all running away from me get back here oh no now that one's floating away too get back here you so what kind of cool things can we make with refined radiance well i'll show you first off the deforester is pretty slick guess what it does chops down entire trees in one fell swoop beautiful nice weapon but also really slow to equip all the way so you know decide if you want to use something so slow or not up to you but there's definitely some really cool stuff to go along with it. For example, the Wand of Symmetry. Ooh, ah, everybody say ooh and ah, because the Wand of Symmetry is awesome. The tooltip indicates that it perfectly mirrors block placement across configured planes. And if you hold control, you can see what happens. If you right click on the ground, it places uh, or moves the mirror. I'll show you what that means in a minute. When you right click in the air, it removes the mirror. So clicking on the ground will place a mirror, Right-clicking on the air will remove the mirror, and right-clicking while sneaking opens the configuration interface. So let's just do mirror once mode. There's also rectangular and octagonal uh, that you can scroll to change. Uh, and then whether or not you want to mirror along the X or the Z axis is up to you. And what happens is when you place the Wand of Symmetry, boop, it places a mirror for you. And when you place a block on one side of the mirror, it's going to be mirrored on the other side of the mirror. And I am in survival mode right now, not creative. So, you know, this actually is pretty cool. Look at that. Now, obviously, it's not going to replace blocks that already exist. So if there's a block in the space, be aware of that. Uh, but it's, 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 it's pretty cool. Uh, you can also mirror block breaks. So pay attention to that. Fancy. I don't know if this will break or not. We'll find out, I guess. Nope, it didn't. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, you can also, if you want, click in the air. It removes the mirror from the world. We could flip it into rectangular mode and do something like this. And now it's going to mirror on a rectangular axis. How cool is that? So obviously there's some cool stuff you can do with it. There's also the handheld block shaper, which is, or block zapper, 
This will uh, place or exchange blocks at a distance for you. It's super useful. You can upgrade it with a bunch of stuff, as you can see here. Uh, basically craft it with the appropriate items and it will upgrade it. There's several attributes you can upgrade like the body, the amplifier, the accelerator, the retriever, and the scope. I'll leave it up to you guys to discover the nuances of all those things. Um, but if you just go ahead and check it out, you'll notice that if you get the basic one, it's not as good, obviously, as the chromatic tier, which is the uh, ultimate one. There's also the handheld world shaper, but this does not have a recipe and is creative mode only. Uh, the block zapper, when you shift right click, will allow you to define uh, what blocks are being placed. Uh, you can also set up a spread range, but it requires the amplifier upgrade. So we can't adjust the spread range on the basic one, but we can adjust the spread range on the upgraded one. When we shift right click it, we can check that out. Pretty cool. Uh, you can see it'll place in a solid plane or in a checkerboard pattern, inverted checkerboard pattern. 25%, uh, 50%, or 75% rolls uh, will place blocks with those chances. So if you do like a three by three area, each block in that area has a 25% chance to place. Nice for some like random structuring. Uh, you can also define whether to follow diagonals and ignore material borders. I'll show you what that's all about and whether or not to turn on replace mode. So to use this tool is pretty straightforward. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna get rid of the simple one and just use the big one, right? We'll keep it in one by one mode for now. When you left click on a block, which can happen at a distance, boop, it'll select it, awesome. Pretty cool. And uh, when we shift right click this die, we'll see that we are currently in place mode. So when I right click, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, but we can bump it up to three mode, right? So that's a radius of three, by the way. So it's gonna place a boom, five by five area. And obviously you can see it's taking the items out of my inventory. So make sure you have enough or be in creative mode also helps too. So because I'm in a spotlight, why not? Boom, boom. Now, you'll also notice that as we're placing this, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of following the, the types of blocks. So if we come over here, there's a good example. Notice that when I'm in this mode, it's, it's, it's placing them on top of the dirt blocks because I'm looking at a dirt block, right? If we turn off ignore material borders, or I guess turn on ignore material borders, it'll place it, you know, in, in the entire way. So it's boom, like that. You can turn this off and now it'll only place on dirt, for example or place on stone or whatever block you're currently looking at, right? So that's pretty cool. You can also set it to uh, replace mode and now what it'll do is it'll replace blocks instead of uh, placing on top of them. Boom, pretty cool. Not too shabby. Also looks super fancy, I'm just saying. Checkerboard mode uh, be behaves exactly like you might expect, boom. And inverse checker mode behaves exactly like you might expect, boom. Uh, and then the 25% roll, there's a 25% chance that each one of these blocks will be placed. So on average, you'll place, you know, one out of four of them, boom. And each time you place the blocks, it'll place a different one of the four. Note that those different attributes have different meanings. So uh, sometimes you won't be able to place quite so far away. Uh, however, if you have a better one, you definitely can. So the lower tier one can't place that far, the further tier one can. So going down the line here, the way this works, body is the harvest level. So if you wanna be able to break obsidian, for example, you need a pretty good body. Uh, that's especially useful for when you're doing exchanging mode, right? Um, area, uh, the amplifier is the area of effect. So if you want to be able to do three by three or five by five, et cetera, et cetera, that's what your amplifier is gonna need to upgrade for. Um, the accelerator is how fast you can uh, place blocks. So if we take a look here, See the cooldowns on the items on my hotbar? And you know, when I do it over here, it's going to go ahead and cool down a lot quicker. Got it? Retriever makes it so you can automatically pick up blocks when you're exchanging. So if we put, uh, again, the simple one in exchange mode, like so, and we flip you to replace mode, notice how the dirt falls on the ground. With this one in exchange mode, the dirt will not fall to the ground. Cool. It goes right into my inventory. And scope is that range guy, right? So whether or not you can place at a distance. And finally, there's a super cool item called the Extendo Grip because it's it's just cool. What can I say? Uh, how does the Extendo Grip work? Well, place it in your offhand and then you can do things a little bit further. So this is probably an intermediary item before you get to the handheld block zapper, but it can also be used for other purposes. So let's say I wanted to place a block over there. Boop, 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 boop. Pretty cool. That's about the distance of it. So see, I can't place there, but as I get a little bit closer, I can. 
That's how it works. Uh, and the same for mining, by the way. <laughs> that is kind of the best. That is kind of hilarious. So uh, a pretty nice way to be able to do things. Just place the extendo grip in your offhand and you're ready to roll. All right, I think that covers most of the tools that are available to you in Create. There's still a lot to cover in this mod. We're probably actually haven't covered everything I wanted to. So I think next episode will not be putting everything together. There's more blocks to cover and more mechanics like minecarts that I haven't even looked at yet. So we will cover more things in episode four and then episode five will probably be putting it all together and showing off a full few cool contraptions that you can check out. For now, Adult 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.